We all know how intimidating and overwhelming Premiere Pro can be, especially if it's your first time. But the good news is, it's actually fairly simple, and once you get the hang of it, it's very easy to navigate and work in. It just takes a bit of determination and practice to get there. And in 10 minutes, we're gonna go from having no experience in Premiere Pro to having an edited and exported video. So let's hop on the computer and get right into it. So first things first, you need good organization. I will briefly cover this, but this is a very crucial part to the whole process. I have an in-depth dedicated video on this, which I'll link up here, and I would recommend checking it out after you're done with this video. But for now, I have imported my footage off of my SD card and put it in the footage section in my template folder. So now that we have our footage in a place that we can edit from, let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. Once it loads up, this is the first screen that you're gonna see. If this is your first time in Premiere Pro, this will most likely be blank, but right here, is where it would display past projects you have saved and if you click on it, it will open up that project and you can continue working on it. But we're gonna be starting a new project up here in the top left corner. Click new project and it'll open up a new window. There are a bunch of options and settings, but we only need to focus on these top two for now. First, let's name the project. You can name it whatever is easiest for you to remember. For this tutorial, I will call mine Learn Premiere Pro in 10 minutes. Then right below that, you wanna make sure the file location is set to a good place for the autosaves to go. I leave mine on default and it saves directly into the Premiere Pro autosave folder. But another option is to save it to the project folder section in our template folder. So once that is all set up and good to go, let's click OK. So now Premiere Pro is fully open and I know this can look super complicated and overwhelming, but stick with me. Let's quickly take a look around as to what each panel does. Up top here, you have all these different options you can choose from, which will open up different panels for each section. But for this video, we are only gonna focus on the editing tab as this is where you will spend most of your time. So make sure the editing tab is selected and you will notice we have four different panels. Let's start down here in the bottom left corner and import our footage, then we will talk about the other panels. You can double click in the box to bring up the import screen, then find your footage and import it. Another way is to make sure the box is selected and click Control plus I or Command plus I on a Mac, then find our folder with the footage, select that and click import. But the fastest way is to find that folder and just click and drag it right into this section. Now that we have our clips imported, you can select different ways to view your clips in this bin by clicking either of these buttons. I personally like the list view as I think it's a lot easier to keep an organized project, but it's completely personal preference. So now that we have our clips imported, we need to create a new sequence so we can start editing. The easiest way to do this is click on a clip and drag it over to our timeline and it will automatically create a sequence based off of the parameters of this clip. There are a few other ways to do this, but for this tutorial, this is the simplest and easiest way. So now your clip is in the timeline, which is what this area is called, as well as this is where all of the editing will take place. When we drag our clip over to create a sequence, you'll notice it created a new file in our folder for that sequence. This is handy if you accidentally click this X and delete your sequence, you can find this file and reopen that sequence. You can also rename this file, which will change the name in your timeline, but also helps keep things organized. But just so we don't get confused, let's create a new folder by clicking on this folder icon and name it Assets, and then drag this sequence file into that folder. So now let's drag our other two clips into the timeline and start editing them. Since we already have the one in, let's select the next one and click and hold to drag over to the timeline. You want to drag it behind the first one because if you stack it on top, you will only be able to view whichever one is on top. You'll also notice that this timeline is separated in half. One section is for the audio tracks and the other is for the video tracks. So make sure you're in the middle of both of these tracks and you can see your video and audio track, then drop it in. Down here, you can click and hold this slider to slide side to side or use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Now let's do the same for the next clip. Click and drag right behind our other clip. Before we start cutting our clips, one other way to bring clips into the timeline is go to a file in our footage bin and double click on it. You'll now notice that up in this top left box, we can now see a preview of that clip. You can click and hold on the preview, then drag that into your timeline. This helps with verifying you have the right clip, as well as there are a few more advanced options you can do here. But for this tutorial, we'll keep it simple. I just wanted to mention that for another option. So now let's start editing our footage. To navigate this area, the slider you can click and hold in the middle to go side to side. And if you click and hold on one of these circles, you can slide in or out, which is going to zoom in or out of the timeline. It will zoom in or out based on where this playhead is, which is what this line is called. To move this around, you can click and hold on the top where these little lines are at and drag it wherever you need. Or if you hover over the line, you can click and hold and slide it around this way as well. 
In this top right box, you can see a preview of your footage and it will show wherever the playhead is. If we move the playhead around, you'll see that this footage up here changes to the part of the clip we are on. If we scrub through our footage, we can see that there is a little bit at the beginning and end that we need to trim off. The easiest way to trim the ends is find where you want the footage to start or end, then click on the clip and put your cursor to the beginning and you should see this bracket with an arrow automatically pop up. Make sure you have both your video and audio tracks selected, then we will click and drag it to where we want the clip to start, which is where the playhead is and we'll trim off all of the unwanted footage. That's a great way to trim the ends of the footage, but if we need to make a cut in the middle of the footage, we need the razor tool which to the left of our timeline is where the tools are and you'll see we have a few different ones we can choose from. The two we will go over for this video are the selection tool, which is what we have now and allows us to select clips and right here is the razor tool, which is what will cut the clip wherever we need. So select that and if you hover over it, it will tell you what it is. With that selected, let's go find the area in the clip that we wanna cut out. So we'll move the playhead and watch the preview to see where we wanna make our cuts. Let's say we wanna cut out this part, so let's zoom in a bit using the slider down here to help us get a more accurate cut. We want the cut to start here, so with our razor tool selected, go ahead and click right where the playhead line is and you'll see it's now cut and a separate clip. And do this for both the video and audio tracks. Now let's cut the other end so we can get rid of this part. Do the same thing and use the playhead to slide to where you wanna make your second cut. We'll make our cut right here, and again, just click where the playhead line is and do this for both the video and audio tracks. Now if we zoom out just a little bit, again using the slider down here, you can see that our clip that was once one long clip is now three separate clips. We want to delete the section we just cut, so we need the selection tool to select and delete. So go over to the tool section on the left side of your timeline and select the selection tool, then we can select our piece we just cut and make sure it's highlighted white like this and click delete on your keyboard. Now that piece of the clip is gone and we have a space that we need to close. There are two ways to do this. The fast and easy way is click in the space and it should turn white, then click delete on your keyboard and it should automatically delete the space. The other way is just click and drag our clip right up next to this clip. So now let's edit these other two clips the same way. With the second clip selected, let's scrub through and find where we want the clip to start. I think right here looks good, and since we already have our selection tool selected, let's hover over the start till we see the bracket with an arrow shape, then let's click and drag both our video and audio tracks to our playhead line. Now we'll go do the same at the end of the clip. I'll have it end right here, so again, I'll hover over the end until I see the bracket with an arrow shape, and click and drag to my playhead line. Then let's delete the space between this clip and the first one by clicking in the space and hitting delete on our keyboard. On our final clip, I just want the middle of this clip, so I'll find where I want it to start and we'll go over to the tool selection on the left of the timeline and select the razor tool. I'll zoom in a bit to make sure I can make the cut in the correct spot and again, I'll cut on the playhead line. Now let's go back into the tool selection and select our selection tool and we can now delete the sections of the clip we just cut. Let's select this beginning part and hit delete. Now we can close up the gap by clicking in the space and hitting delete or dragging this clip right up next to the other one. With all our clips together, make sure they are at the very beginning of the timeline. If they are not, we can select them all by clicking and dragging over them, then click the first clip and drag it to the beginning of the timeline. Sometimes you have to make sure that your playhead is at the very beginning and then you can zoom in a little bit and drag it that way. Before we export our video, in the case you need to do any adjusting to the clip, such as scale, rotation, or audio levels, if we select a clip, we can go into this top left box and find where it says Effect Controls and click on that. If you have the video clip selected, you'll see you can adjust the position, scale, and opacity if you need. If you go and select the audio track, you'll be able to adjust the volume if you need to. I won't dive into this section, but did want to quickly mention that so you know where it is if you need any of these options. So now that we have our video all edited up, we can play through it and make sure it looks exactly how we want. You can do this by hitting the spacebar or clicking this play button. In my case, everything looks good, so we're gonna go ahead and export the video. But before we export, let's make sure to save because sometimes Premiere Pro will crash on the export and you can lose a lot of the work that you've done. To do this, you can click File, then click Save. So with our project saved, let's export by going into File, Export, then click Media. In here, you wanna make sure your format is H.264 and your preset is match source high bitrate. 
right here next to the output name is where we can select where we want the project to save to as well as we can rename it. Click that and I'm going to select the final videos folder in my template editing folder I have created. And I will rename it to Learn Premiere Pro in 10 minutes. Then once it all looks good, go ahead and click export. Now congratulations, you have successfully edited and exported your first Premiere Pro video. Now to save you some time, I'll quickly mention some keyboard shortcuts that are gonna make your life so much easier. And the first one is C. This one is your razor tool, so you don't have to go all the way to your tool section every time you need to make a cut. You can just hit this on your keyboard, make your cut, then you can go back to your selection tool, which is V. This way you can make your cut and then switch back to your selection tool all while staying in the same area. The next one is Control Z. This one is the undo button. And if you make a mistake in your project, you hit this, it takes you back. And the nice part about this is you can even go back multiple times. So if you make a really big mistake, you can still possibly be saved. Then this last one that I'll mention should become a habit and this is Control S. This is the save your project. Unfortunately, Premiere Pro is known to crash at really random times. And if you haven't saved your project in a while, you're gonna lose all of that work that you've done. I make it a habit to click save after any major updates I've done to the edit just to be safe. If you wanna learn more keyboard shortcuts to start memorizing and help speed your edit up, then click here and I'll see you over there. Peace.